Broadcasting from the campus of Salisbury University, this is WSDL Ocean City, NPR News Talk 90.7, putting Delmarva first. It's time for Delmarva Today with your host, Don Rush. It's uh, time for the holiday cheer when many of us are discussing those Thanksgiving plans. But for the homeless, they must rely on the kindness of strangers. Welcome back to Delmarva Today. This is Don Rush. As the nation emerges from the Great Recession, there are signs that homelessness has declined from 2013. With the economic recovery in some 37 states, as well as uh, Washington, D.C. and the territories, there has been a drop overall of about 2.3%. But the risk of homelessness has not, with 7.7 million people living with family and friends. That's an increase of 67% since 2007. Here in Salisbury, of course, the homeless is difficult to count, but there is a group, Youth Reach Maryland, which has begun counting efforts in Baltimore and Anne Arundel County. Talk about what it's like to be homeless here in the holidays. In our studios, we have Claudia Nagel. She's with Diakonia, as well as Sister Virginia from Joseph House. And uh, welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Well, uh, let me start with you, Claudia. So, uh, so what is being done here in terms of uh, the homeless here, particularly in the Salisbury area, in terms of dealing with uh, the fact that they don't necessarily have a, a home to go and uh, have a big dinner? Well, there are a number of different things, and there's a continuum of resources uh, available in the community um, that address different types of issues. At Diakonia, we have a housing program, which is emergency housing and transitional housing that can house up to 40 people. Um, that's men, women, and families. And then we have a, a large food pantry that's open seven days a week to address the food insecurity across the community, as well as programs targeting families who are at risk of becoming homeless, um, and we work with families in the Worcester and Wicomico County. We have grants for both counties for that prevention of homelessness. Um, one of the things that we don't necessarily see in our region is a decline in the number of people seeking services. Um, at Diakonia, we have about 250 to 300 requests for housing monthly that we are not able to um, satisfy, which means that um, our 40 beds are full, and then people continue to call us to see if they can get into an emergency housing bed. Now, it, that 300 may not be the same, uh, may, not, may not be a different 300 people for the month, but that's 300 requests for shelter or housing that we're not able to meet. And our partners across the community are also experiencing the same uh, demand for for housing and their beds are always full like ours are um, we the shore hasn't rebounded as quickly mm. from the recession um, employment year-round employment living wages all of those things contribute to some of the challenges faced by organizations like Diakonia or Joseph House in addressing the needs that are out there. Yes, Sister Virginia, what are you seeing and, and what kind of services do you provide, particularly during the holidays when a lot of us are running around, we're worried about what size turkey to have and mm-hmm. what, you know, we're already thinking about Black Friday and gifts for, for the holidays. What, what, is it, what is it that you're experiencing? Well, I was just saying to Claudia, we're seeing suddenly a surge in homeless people coming into the Joseph House Day Shelter. Um, more, including more women and children. I'm, we're trying to kind of probe a little bit. You know, we uh, we don't we're we're we we the Joseph House Day Shelter is a place for people to come and just immediately get the kind of help they need: uh, food, showers, laundry. They come uh, and so they can have a change of clothing when they take a shower because most of them are living on the street or uh, in, sort of sleeping on someone's doorstep basically so but there are more we're not sure why 
we normally have maybe 20 to 25, and, and yesterday there were 36 people in our day shelter, and it's very crowded. It's a very, mm. very small space for all those people. Um, this time of year, uh, our soup kitchen people, we, we have volunteer soup kitchen churches, uh, church groups, and they will provide Thanksgiving-style meals uh, for the people, and there are different churches also. So uh, it's quite likely that if you're homeless and you're kind of attached to the grapevine, mm-hmm. you'll find at least one Thanksgiving dinner somewhere. But they're still living outdoors or living in really pretty minimal uh, situations. Uh, Joseph House is, a, also is we call it the Joseph House Crisis Center. So people come there for financial assistance if they're in danger of eviction or if they need a security deposit, because so many of our people may not be homeless now, but they're just on the verge, they're on the the edge of being homeless so often, their utility cutoffs and that sort of thing. And, of course, as the weather gets bad, this becomes even more of an issue and an emergency issue. So our we try to help people in that way to stave off homelessness. We post jobs, and we're also a center just where they can, we can recommend where people can go for help, the library for information about jobs and housing and that sort of thing. Um, as for the cold weather, right, it's coming on soon. We we uh, try to supply them with warm clothing, hats, gloves. We could we welcome all kinds of any kind of donations of those things, thermal underwear, mostly for men, but we could use some things for women too, and toiletries. We can definitely use deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrushes, little shampoos. Um, uh, we could use hoodies, big hoodies for, for men or, or smaller ones for women. As I say, it's mostly men, thank God. But um, uh, And just generally, we're just seeing more people. We don't really know why. So what is it like... To be, or what sense do you get? It's like to be homeless, particularly during the holidays. I mean, is it a, is it a depressing time for homeless folks, or is it? And how do they connect at all with their families during these times, but other <clears> times not? One of the things that we encourage the people who are calling Diaconia home temporarily, and part of the services we provide helps them to reach out to see if they can reconnect with family, and <clears throat> sometimes they can. And sometimes that's not a possibility. So through partnerships that we have with the community, we, tr- we create a home-like environment for folks. We help them to um, sort of manage that stress of the holidays. Because whether you're homeless or you're not homeless, the holidays can be very stressful. And what makes that even more of a stressful event is the the issue of not having money um, or enough money. And um, we see the folks who are in our housing program, but our, we also have seen a huge uptick in the number of families who are using our food pantry um, just to make ends meet. I mean, some of the, the policy changes in terms of how um, food stamps are um, delivered and delays and changes in that system have put increasing um, pressure on families who are already struggling to feed themselves. And so through food drives in the community, um, we're able to bring in additional food. Last year, through donations from the community, through food drives, Diaconia distributed over 100,000 pounds of food to individuals and families across our community in in Worcester County um, through our food pantry. And that was food that was donated by businesses, uh, churches, different people who have food drives for us. I mean, we have an event coming up this week that um, is going to be done by Brandywine Senior Living Center. It's called Stuff the Bus. And they have a two-day event where people from the community bring canned goods, et cetera. Um, to stuff a bus, and then those canned goods are brought to Diaconia. We partner with the casino. Mm -hmm. They run a food drive for a period of time 
between uh, the beginning of November and Thanksgiving and then beginning of, of December and the Christmas holiday. But that through those partnerships and through that donation, that's how we're able to meet that need. So in addition to doing that food pantry distribution, over 60,000 meals were provided to the people who, the guests at Diaconia over that period of time. So, and as Sister said, the need um, for things like toilet paper, paper yes, towels. I meant to mention that um, too. Those kinds of things. <laughs> I important. mean, you think about being a family of 40 and how much, how much, how many paper products, how much toilet paper, how much uh, paper towel or plates or plastic spoons, Kleenex. Kleenex, you know, all of those kinds of things, laundry detergent, mm-hmm. um, because people don't have money. Um, and so we try and food stamps and don't, food pay, for stamps don't pay for those items. So those are things that come out of the budget. Like, and, and so it's a real challenge and we work with people on how to economize. Um, so there's a lot of, of, there's a lot of moving parts in both of our yes. um, operations to help rebuild and give back that dignity and, um, purpose for people um, who have to ask because it's not an easy thing. It's a very humbling experience. So, so, uh, Virginia, the, the people that you meet, um, especially the people of families perhaps have just become homeless or maybe have been homeless for the last few years, because, particularly because of the Great Recession. Is there a sense of loss on the part of what they, what they had and the idea that for a lot of us, we would never have expected to find ourselves in that kind of position. Yes, yes. I'm thinking of one gentleman in particular who had a, a job for something like 17 years, and he he lost that job. And he's an older man. Like I don't think he's very old, but in his 50s. <laughs> 50s, okay. And he ha- has been having a very hard time finding a, another full-time job. And it's very discouraging and I think after a while, many people kind of lose confidence uh, that they can ever regain the life that they had. Um, I remember an, a business magazine saying, what about the older worker? 40. <laughs> and I said, 40? <laughs> <laughs> and here are these folks who are nearing 60 and they're out of work and they, they really don't, they, they're just a, there's a lot of fear that they can't really ever pick up the pieces again. And we tried, as Claudia was saying, you know, you try to kind of probe in and find out and, and try to encourage them and, and give them hope that, uh, that that they can become, they can live in a home again and have a job again. It's a, it's kind of, sometimes it's a challenge to help the individuals or the families find their strength and capitalize on that. We do things like there's a volunteer opportunities and ways for people to contribute because although, you know, people are receiving housing for free and things like that, and although that sounds like a wonderful thing, that can have, you know, to be have to ask for those basic needs can be pretty demoralizing for folks. So helping them find a sense of purpose, helping with um different projects that we have going on at Diaconia, stocking the pantry, cooking some meals, um, doing some handiwork like painting, if there's a painting need. Those are things that people can give back and ways to give back, and we encourage that, and we see that happen a lot. We have guests who come back and volunteer in our food pantry who volunteer in different ways, and that gives them a sense of purpose, and we all need a sense of purpose and a way to give back, um, it, it builds that sense of gratitude. This may sound like a simple thing, but at the meals in the, in the evening, we have a community meal for the people who are living at Diakonia. And one of the things that we focus on during that meal is asking everyone to share a highlight or something good that happened that day um, so that it's not just to focus on what they've lost or what they don't have, but what they do have and sharing that joy of something good in a community where you're supported. Um, because people who are experiencing homelessness, that doesn't define them. That's not all they are. There's much more to who the people are that we work with than the fact that they are without a home. 
or without the means to maintain a home. So they are, they are mothers, they are fathers, they are artists, they are, you know, there, there are many different things and helping to raise that to the surface and that awareness, not only for themselves, but for people around them is key in helping them to rebuild their connection and their, their gratitude and all of those things, their awareness of that. So, so Virginia, it's, it almost seems as if there's a certain um, spiritual uh, component to this, and not necessarily in a, in a particularly religious way, but that there seems to be some something inner um, dynamic for individuals who are facing homelessness. You think that's true? I do, and I we we when we meet at the Joseph House in the morning, there's a an optional prayer. We don't right. we don't require prayer at all, but practically everybody joins in very enthusiastically and express their gratitude to God for bringing them to a safe place and providing for at least some of their needs. I find uh, the homeless are very spiritual. Mm -hmm. They're, they're very um, tuned into because they're actually, they're materially so poor that they're not distracted by material (laughs) things the way some people can be. I mean, I think when you're, when you're well-to-do or, or comfortable, you can forget about God and forget about your dependence upon him. But when you're homeless, you, you're pretty aware of it every, every day. And um, so we, we try to encourage them to uh, get strength from their faith. And, uh, um, and we, just, we just find that, that that's a very fruitful fruitful kind of conversation to have with our, with our people. And, yep. and the network of other providers, mm. like Dia Kania with Joseph House and Sister and I, and, you know, it's, a, it's across the community. We share also, if we have a plethora of uh, Marlin, we call other <laughs> folks and say, hey, would you like some, right. would you need some, 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 frozen fish we have yeah. that do we and, and so we it's a community you know there's a network of providers and people across the community as well as you know it's it's really helping people take stock in who they are what they have to give and really building that so that the some of that negative feeling or whatever is is suppress some so it helps raise them up well, we've been speaking with Claudia Nagel. She is with Dia Kinney and also Sister Virginia. She's with Joseph House talking about what it is like to be homeless uh, this Thanksgiving holiday. I appreciate both of you stopping by and chatting with us. Thank you You're so welcome. much. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. This has been Delmarva Today. I'm Don Rush. Thanks for listening. This has been Delmarva Today, a production of Delmarva Public Radio. Chris Rank produces and is our audio engineer. Don Rush is your host. For podcasts, visit our website, delmarvapublicradio.net or subscribe to the Delmarva Today podcast on iTunes. Delmarva Today can now be seen on PAC-14. To view the schedule, view the Daily Times, or visit PAC-14.org.